if we need them. If we don't, we'll offset them and move them forward if we can. Uh, the vehicle equipment uh, purchase uh, funded through the equipment reserve for 2020. Uh, we're buying two new ambulances. We have a, feed, a fleet of 15 and we replace two and three annually. Uh, this year we're replacing two of them. Uh, typically they're over 275,000 kilometers this year. They're well into the 300s. So uh, that's where we're at with capital this year. Any questions? Councillor Miller. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Kevin, the community paramedicine program is, is clearly a successful program and it's, it's doing what it was intended to do, if not more. Do we get any kind of an, uh, I know we're not going to get a check back from the government, do we get any acknowledgement of the benefit to the health care system for that project? Um, yeah, so it's 100% funded. As far as recognition for the program, I would say as far as bringing paramedicine into the light of healthcare, because we've always been really, we're kind of in between, are we healthcare, are we an emergency service? I would say we're both. And uh, at the table now with the discussions around Ontario health teams, and uh, we have a report coming in a couple of weeks about paramedic services modernization and the role that we play in that. We play a pretty substantial role. So uh, like as far as in that community, you know, you know we. We, have, we, we definitely have a niche in that area of taking care of these people and preventing those emergency room visits. But uh, yeah, I, I would say the government is, is, is aware of those, uh, the, especially when they're starting to talk now about treat and refer, treat and release, and expanded scope of care, not just about community paramedics, but for 911 paramedics. Like, because that's where we have to get to, is we have to start thinking that way for all of it. Thanks. Okay, any other questions then, Kevin? Okay, thank you, Kevin. Favorite part of the day, transportation. <laughs> How we get here, but <laughs> screwed up right off the top. Didn't turn the mic on. All right, good start. Um, where are we here? So transportation services is made up of, of kind of our seven uh, mini budgets. So I'm going to try as quickly as I can because it's been a very long day to go through all these budgets. But any questions anyone has, just feel free, of course, to ask, and we'll try to uh, answer them as they come up. Um, our first, uh, I guess, just for a quick summary, which Kevin has kind of already, uh, Kevin Wepler's already kind of gone over, is is on on uh, on the summary page. Uh, it's kind of, it shows a 5% increase, basically 5.09 in our budget. So that includes the 1% growth portion. So the majority of that is through the construction resurfacing of minor capital, which has that 1% growth component to try to catch up on our infrastructure deficit. So that of course has been very helpful in, in helping us kind of uh, make up the, the gap. Um, our first budget on page kind of 242 and 243 is the ordinary maintenance budget. And that budget is basically our best guess at how to maintain our roads the way they are. So you'll see on there all the different activities, uh, you know, like a dead animal disposal and catch basin cleaning. And this is really our best guess at those activities. A lot of them are weather dependent. Um, clearly, if you, know, if you ran out of a budget and brushing, you're not going to stop doing brushing if it's a safety matter. So this is really our best guess to kind of just get our activities going. Um, if you had a year where you didn't have any rain, you're not going to do as much mowing, but you're not going to just keep doing mowing because your budget said so. So that, this is kind of our best attempt at those. Um, and you can kind of see that even at the top in, in roadside maintenance we have, um, and that would be on page 242 and 3. Uh, we're not doing as much grain or sealing this year. Uh, we, it's, you know, it's kind of the black you see on the shoulders. Just a base, it's basically a washout preventer. We haven't been having a lot of issues with it, so we're, we're kind of taking a year off from grain or sealing. Um, and, I, and I guess really these activities rather than say everyone increases by 2% a year I think you'll see a lot of these kind of things where some years you need it's like you know like your house some years you're going to replace a window some years you're not so um, that's kind of where we're at with these activities it's our best uh, estimate on, on what we're going to spend this year in maintaining our roads a couple of things just worth noting um, that are in the report here uh, pavement marking has gone up by 70,000 that is mostly because well, it's two reasons, but mostly because there's a new tender out, so we've got new prices. So we were getting a pretty good deal on our previous tender, 
um, it's going up more now, and the increase of paved shoulders is, is having more of that white line. Now we hear a lot of good feedback about that white line, especially in the winter, especially with senior uh, drivers or people like myself, their vision is getting kind of progressively worse. Uh, I really enjoy that white line along with everybody else. So uh, another big uh, hit this year, sign installation. In 2013, some of the material we bought that we made ourselves in the sign shop, it hasn't been holding up quite as, lo as, uh, as good as we'd like. So there's some signs failing a reflectivity test. So we've been replacing more signs than we're anticipating. As far as winter maintenance, it's up 70,000 this year. Uh, um, our finance friends uh, basically help us figure out what exactly we should estimate for that. Not that they're experts in weather. They're kind of going based on our previous uh, years and adding 2%. So that again, we're completely uh, you know, at the mercy of the weather. Uh, road top maintenance, as I said, we've, re we've um, reduced a little bit by cutting back on some granular sealing. So that basically is the ordinary maintenance budget. On to sort of our, our largest area of our funds is our construction resurfacing. Uh, the map would be on page 252, which outlines all our jobs, and the jobs themselves are on page uh, 244. So one thing, of course, to mention is although the municipal boundaries are on the map, we really ignore that they are there. We are looking at it as a network. Um, this is our network, and where those roads happen to be, that's just where they are. So we're not trying to you know, evenly disperse the money we spend. We're trying to do good asset management on our roads. So, um, and we base it on our 10-year plan, generally. And it's sort of a living document. We, you know, we come forward with the 10-year capital every year. We would like it if our budget was the exact same as a 10-year capital, and it never seems to quite work out that way between um, jobs with some partners, um, just conditions of things that change more quickly or more slowly than you think. So we just highlighted here on uh, page um, 226 some of the jobs that are different from the 10-year capital. So the first one is the 119 stormwater diversion. Um, Blue Mountains has put that off a year. It's a partner project, so we're, we're following along with that. In Katy, we put it off for some time because the uh, municipal drain is still kind of going through the process. Uh, the, the maintenance of that location was getting pretty severe, so we overlaid it this year with a, with a patch. It should buy us five more years um, with, for a better road in Katy. So, and the same west of Katy, so we've put that off for a bit. Um, it's kind of holding up. This whole asset management philosophy, we kind of like to leave a road as long as we can until it becomes you know, a safety hazard or a maintenance expense. So we're kind of trying to get them where we repair them when they really need to be repaired. Gray Road 40 overlay, we didn't include just because of budgetary constraints. And Gray Road 7, um, it just was in a little better shape than we were expecting when we started looking at it a little more and we thought we'd put it off for a year. So I'm on to page 227 of the countdown of the uh, report here. Um, so there's some additional jobs that, are, that have been brought into the program as well. And most of these are shared projects um, with our partners. So, We've got a carryover of the jobs in uh, Durham and Dundalk and the Holstein Bridge. Basically, in most cases, that is the top lift of asphalt. Uh, we finished late in the year this year. We're going to go and pave the top lift next summer. So, uh, Another one is Gray Road 9 and uh, from Melanchthon Osprey Town Line to Gray Road 124. It's deteriorating quite quickly. Um, just as a matter of interest, and we probably should have thrown it on the map, Dufferin is doing a quite a sizable job on their 9 as well. So we're putting a tender together. Uh, we're getting our purchasing people to release both tenders as one with different schedules. So we've, we've finished our tender and uh, Dufferin has finished theirs and we're gonna put it out as one big massive job. So hoping for some competitive pricing of course on that. Pardon me? Uh, it's just short of Dundalk I believe. It's, uh, I think it might be the concession before Dundalk but they're also doing part of their road too. So they have two roads going in that tender. Uh, the next one, uh, Gray Road 19, so that would be south of the future roundabout in um, south of uh, the former skis, please. That was in our, in our project or our plan for 2022. Simcoe was hoping to move it up. Um, with the amount of jobs we have coming right in that area in Blue Mountains in the next few years, it's probably nice to get it out of the way. Um, it's a fairly simple pulverize and pave with paved shoulders. Simcoe is doing the design and handling the tender, so. Um, we thought it would probably be wise and agreed with them that we should move that up and get that done before um, the really difficult roundabout comes in Blue Mountain. Another one is uh, structure 124-145, Singhampton Bridge. 
And the, the thing, you know, we first noticed about this, we know, we get reports on that bridge as well. We know it needs some work. Um, Simcoe had uh, hired a consultant to do a report on it. And the first thing we noticed is it's a million dollars. So, you know, pretty shocking at first to think it's a million dollars on a rehab, right? Because you think, well, I, I don't want to spend a million on a rehab. For a million, you should really get a new bridge. That is what people think. Well, Burnside did a very thorough job of going through all the options, right from different types of rehab all the way to a full replacement. So, and they did a cost benefit analysis over the next 90 years. And a rehab is still the best option for long-term money for Simcoe and for Gray, since we share that structure. So uh, really happy with Simcoe's work on that. And we're kind of looking forward to getting that bridge done because it has been a bit of a maintenance headache. So that is the uh, construction, resurfacing, and minor capital budget. Is there any questions on? Councilor Miller? Thank you, Mr. Warden. Um, I'm really, really pleased to hear that politics does not play a part in where you do your construction work. That said, uh, the bridge in Orchardville, the old bridge, um, is there an urgency to get that structure out of there or is it purely we're looking for something to do? I'm being sarcastic. Sorry, yeah. if that wasn't apparent. Um, I have a report coming actually in the next few weeks about that structure, but just to give you a quick outline, I know uh, it's one of your favorite historical structures uh, that you love, <laughs> um, but it's just one of those things where the maintenance of it, uh, it, it's a bit of a risk. We've had it closed for a long time. Uh, we have barriers up that are, are always moved and people are using it. People are canoeing underneath it. Um, it's just too much of a risk for us to keep it open. So that, that is our hurry to remove it, really. Maybe there's an opportunity for tourism. Where is the tourism people? Actually, we did have a public meeting, and, and people mentioned that people had gotten their wedding pictures on that bridge. But it would be an awful picture if it was of people falling into the bridge, of course. But, um, so that's why we're really in a hurry to get rid of it. <laughs> Moving on, any other questions then to that? So the next budget on page 246 is our supervision and overhead. A lot of this is kind of set expenses and... Uh, um, to keep our, our services going. Uh, the two biggest things worth noting is uh, most of the decrease comes from reduced insurance rates. This, there was a report that came at the end of last year about that. And the other thing we mentioned in here is the uh, expenditure of 184000 on the asset management software. We've been, we've been on the asset management bandwagon a long time. Um, our work management and asset management software has probably not kept up with what we want it to be. We'd like um, some more input, as Kevin said earlier, on decision making, um, a better way to show uh, this council how we're doing, um, just more long-term planning. Right now we do a lot of long-term planning, but it's a very arduous process because you're doing it with an Excel sheet or by hand or doesn't produce necessarily the maps instantly that you'd like of our new asset management system. So. Um, we're starting our negotiations now on a new software, and uh, it really looks promising as far as helping us really bring asset management uh, forward to where we want it to be. Facilities, domes, and depots on page 247. Biggest thing, of course, there is the uh, 800,000 going into patrol D reserve and 500,000 coming out for the reserve. We've talked about purchasing that patrol um, D lands. Uh, that would be something we want to get done in 2020. Page 249, the equipment budget. Um, very happy with our, with our fleet committee. Um, we have pretty thorough meetings, trying to save whatever we can, trying to um, keep our equipment going. We have a, a really efficient fleet of mechanics and they work on the ambulances as well. But um, out of this, you know, this budget, it came that uh, the grade all, which you know, we had in there for 400,000 is probably uh, you know, predicted to be about 580 now. So we started looking at that and saying, our grade all isn't, you know, it's in decent condition what we have. Um, and of course, when you, when you start thinking about another 180,000, is that piece of equipment the right piece of equipment? So that's kind of the big discussions we have at the fleet meeting. Is there another piece of equipment we can have? Last year we trialed a, 
a rubber tire excavator, which I know most, most of you have at uh, your municipalities, and uh, the guys were really happy with it. So whether you still have the grade all and run a rubber tire or you add a rubber tire. So with our new maintenance manager, we've kind of been trying to go through, we have a fleet meeting coming up to talk again about where are we going with our equipment. We're always looking at a way to kind of get the right piece of equipment that has more than one use, basically. Um, on to uh, page 2050, our asset management budget. Uh, big items in there are just that the, um, the stormwater sewer inspection is going to be completed. That This is the second year, and that is uh, mandated, but a great information to have. And another just savings was about 80000 in our geotech budget, which went down. So our engineering department has uh, been trying to get geotechnical information on all our roads in the capital plan. And they're kind of at the point where every road in our 10-year capital has geotech information now. They've been putting out a tender every year, so we were able to cut that back this year. And the last is the quarry budget on page 251, which really for now is just uh, kind of a, a bit of a placeholder till the final uh, quarry um, motions are finished. Thanks, Pat. Any questions up till now? All right. Take care. Thank you. Kevin, I think I have you back for overview of uh, reserves. Thank you. Yeah, um, in, included in the back is uh, our, I think there's four pages of reserves, and we've got a number of reserves here, but I just thought I would give a kind of a high-level update. Um, we have uh, in reserve and reserve funds, um, uh, we're projecting in, um, at the end of uh, 2019 to have about $43 million in reserves, and then at the end of 2020, about $39 million. So some of those reserves are, are going down. But... Um, we base these on our building condition assessments and our life cycle of our equipment and all that. So these these will be based on those life cycles and stuff. Um, some of this too, the, the, the year ending of 2019 could be higher depending on how some of these jobs that maybe didn't get done in 2019 and be carried forward that we need to research how much th those are. Um, just like I said, I think I think most of the staff have identified some of the big things that they're uh, using money for in in these reserves and. A reserve seemed like a lot of money, but when you put into place that you have over 400 million in assets that you're trying to take care of, these reserves are important to have and and to be able to maintain a, our tax base without having huge in, increases in, in in certain years. So, um, other than that, um, that's all I have on on those. But if there's questions or concerns, uh, any questions on the reserves? It's good we have some. <laughs> For sure. Okay. No questions. Do you want to do? Uh... Yeah. So, uh, going back here, we're, we're what staff are proposing here is a additional, just over seven hundred thousand to be raised from additional taxes um, from uh, with a one point two six percent increase. So that is here for your considerations if if you if you're wanting something different. Um, um, the clerk's office has prepared a, a, a motion. I wasn't presumptuous to put that out with the agenda because I, I wanted to walk through this budget first, but it, I'm looking for, for your direction now. I'm looking for my agenda because I had it here somewhere. <laughs> so, yes, uh, you were saying that you didn't put a, a resolution on there, but uh, I guess the question will be is then, are there any further questions from the county councillors, and uh, that that, that uh, resolution that you could probably pull it up. Well, there it is up there. Yes. So we had with the two the two points. You want to speak to that? Sure. So there was a couple things that were sort of pulled. Uh, one was with regards to students. And do you want to repeat those? Where are we at with sure. that, Kara? Um, so staff has prepared just a draft resolution or a draft motion that reflects the um, changes that were suggested throughout the meeting. So there's two points there surrounding the asset management spending and a student planner position. So just to note as well, the um, <clears throat> the highlighted sections reflect the budget as was presented today. So depending on what council decides to do, that could change come time to pass the bylaw. 
when that time comes forward. So um, if anyone would like to move the motion as it's presented on the screen or a variation of that, then this is the time that that can happen. All right. The mover by Councillor Millen and Councillor Burley to the, what you see in the screen. And then it can be amended. From yeah, so if there's any changes, we can have amendments and stuff. Madam CEO, do you have something to add? Motions live. Motions live. I, I, I do have um, some question about um, making a, a change to the asset management spending this year, given the amount that we're of time and effort and analysis that we're investing in with Public Sector Digest. Um, the, the policies um, and the assessment that, that they're going to provide for us, I think, is worthy of your consideration, and I think when that work is done, we will be in a much um, clearer space about exactly what's required and when it's required. So um, certainly there's nothing wrong with, with adjusting the spending at, at this year. We would just go back to our capital plan and, and have a look at other projects going forward. There's always a concern that um, it takes takes people and, and time and attention to put together good projects. So I, I would want to make sure that we had the right things to move forward to to make up that additional money but if council wanted to wait on this until uh, 2021 once we'd had the benefit of of the further public sector digest information i think that's worth considering as well all right thank you i think kim's still on oh, uh, thank you, Madam CEO. Uh, so there's a, a comment there from uh, from staff's perspective. Do you think that, uh, Kevin, before I go to other questions, go ahead. I would, con uh, I would agree with Kim. I, I, I think until we have better data in that, that I would sooner just follow what the asset management plan was saying and then wait till we get an update on that. And so I would, I'd like to just leave it at the 1% and not increase the budget for that. On the student position with Randy getting a full time, I'm just wondering if we could, for the interim year, of, and to see how it goes, if you want that student position left in there, that we just fund it from the one time funding reserve then and to see how his full time complement and where things, I know he's got a number of special projects, and if he can get some of those behind him where he thinks he would be come the 2021 budget. And so that way we wouldn't be, wouldn't be increasing the levy amount that we've stated in this document if if you were to do that so okay so i'm going to go back to the mover and the seconder you, i don't know if you, if you have any comments I'll, I'll move on to questions uh, you've heard comments from staff no questions okay uh councillor desai did you have an indication you want to speak councillor desai thank you mr warden um i had brought up the asset management issue at the start of this meeting and i do take staff's comments well on and that we are getting new data this coming year. Having said that, I, I'm fairly certain that the new data isn't going to come back and say you can reduce the amount that you're transferring to asset management. So going to 1.7, I don't think that's a, um, a fiscally irresponsible use of, of funds in the current year. Um, even with the 1%, um, even if we go with the 1.7%, and we fund the entire um, 12,000 from the levy, we still do not cross the 2% line on the levy, on the net levy increase, which again, I don't think 2% increase is, is unreasonable at all. We often, we, we, um, we get into this headspace where budgets become a political decision and not policy decisions. I, I ask that you, you look at this not from a, not from a perspective of a, a what happens if we do go to an increased budget or, or an increased levy, but we ask what happens if we don't. We have aging infrastructure. There was a Toronto Star article not very long ago which, which showed that Toronto today is in a worse place than it was a few years ago because it did not make investments in the infrastructure. 
we don't have the same infrastructure as Toronto. We don't have the, and, and you know, for, not for one second will I, uh, will I say that we need to invest in infrastructure as much as Toronto needs to. But at the same time, we cannot afford to fall behind on investing in infrastructure. We have the town of Blue Mountains, as, as the presenters this morning pointed out, and as, as uh, Councillor Sampson and Councillor Potter through the presentations today pointed out, town of Blue Mountains is growing. It's growing as a tourism industry. It's growing... As a, uh, as a municipality in terms of population. Grey Highlands is growing as a, as a, as a uh, population centre. So we're, we're going to have population increases and we're not going to have the infrastructure investments that we're, we, we are going to need. I'll, I'll leave you with this. I don't think 2% is unreasonable and I, 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 I would move an amendment that we um, move one7 uh, percent to the asset management instead of the one percent. Just for clarity, that's already encapsulated, encapsulated in the motion that's here. Both the mover and the seconder have, have already recognized that in the motion. So what the motion you see is including that. Right. Okay, Councilor Desai. Thank you, Mr. Wharton. In that case, then the 1.26 number wouldn't be right. Okay, sorry. So, I think staff's going to, you're going to try to pull that number out, right, Kevin? And can I clarify, when you say 1.7, you're t saying like on a $57 million, we, we said 1% was 572,000. You're asking for almost another percent of that, so you're looking at like nine. 972,000 to be included in the transportation budget. So you're asking. I can ask Councillor Desai on his calculation through his uh, calculator at uh, what he was referring to there. I, we don't have, do we have another mathematician here? That <laughs> Councillor Desai. My math was wrong. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I would concur with, uh, with uh, Kevin. The 900,000? 1.7 versus 1, it's the 9, what's that 9 equate to then? That difference would be an additional uh, $400,540 would be being added to this levy contribution. 400,540. 400, and, and just reference like five, you know, 590,000 is 1%. So that's what you're, you're asking, you're asking that you'd be, yeah, you'd be close to under the 2% or right around it. If that's what you, what you desire. So. so probably we would like to have that number fairly accurate. So you're saying like 1.98? I would need, I'd, I'd have to pull out my spreadsheets and punch those numbers in, but I'm, I'm just saying 590,000 is, is 1%. So when you're talking, you know, an additional 400, so yeah, on top of the 1.26. So I... Okay, the motion is on the floor. I do, I will make a comment that it probably, there's probably half of the municipalities have set their budget based on <laughs> thinking it's 1.26, but subject to change, right? I think Councillor Sampson, you were next. Uh, thank you much, very much, uh, Warden. Um, I agree with my colleague that uh, there needs to be a very serious effort placed on making sure we allocate the appropriate funds for asset renewal. I don't know how you do that accurately enough and, frankly, respecting the taxpayers enough without a proper asset management plan that I am hearing we don't completely have at this point in time. So I would say to err on the caution, we stick with the numbers that is, that is in the current budget. However, um, I am a bit worried, as I spoke to you a little bit earlier, about the transition of, 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 of this uh, county into a lower tier service area in the, in the fire, uh, uh, fire service department. Uh, it's a small number in the budget, 50,000, I think. In the space of the numbers we just talked about, it's a small number. But it's the principle, I think, that I'm worried about. I thought I had heard when I asked the question right off the get-go 
what the core principle of the budget process was, and I thought I'd heard it was to deliver on the core mandated services of the county. Fire services is not a core mandate service of the county unless I missed something from previous lower tier and upper tier decisions. It may well be the responsibility and a good thing for the county to do to try to coordinate amongst lower tier municipalities a better way to communicate amongst fire services or between themselves. That may be a good thing to do, but it's not a core service that should be added to the, the base budget. It should be a service that's funded by those municipalities who wish to participate in that team building exercise. And so while it's a small number, I'm worried about what this means and the message it's delivering to some of the lower tier partners. What else are you prepared uh, to do that, that we would choose to have a voice in? So unless there's a, uh, a burning reason to do this, I would say that that item should be removed from the budget and that service pr provided, if the county believes it should be, on a fee for service basis by those participating municipalities who want to participate in, in that uh, fire communication project. So on this item, I, I, I'm happy to ador endorse the original number that's in the budget, but I welcome your enthusiasm for uh, uh, spending on some of the infrastructure around the county. It's desperately needed. In the absence of that, we will have a problem. But I would actually move that the Communications Fire Services Project be removed from the 2020 budget. Just to be clear, are you moving so we have a motion on the floor, so then just procedurally, are you moving an amendment to, okay. So can you just, re, can you just reword that, please? I believe I'm moving an amendment, since an amendment's on the floor, I don't know if it's been no. fully moved. Not yet. It. But if it hasn't, then I'm moving an amendment to the main amendment, the main motion. If the, the amendment has not been already moved, then I'm moving an amendment to the amendment, I think. No, you're, well, you're working on here. I haven't asked for a second, I just want to be clear. Fire services communication project in the 2020 budget. Okay. Is there a seconder for that, Councillor Potter? Sorry, did you want, sorry, you, Councillor Lear, you, you sort of indicated, were you in, wanting to second this? Okay, so we have it, uh, it's on the floor. I'll open it now for, for discussion. Did you, did you wish to speak to it, Councillor Lear? Councillor Lear, you have the floor. I, I just want, I'm confused. The fire decision's already made, correct? Madam CEO. The discussion that, um, that we had with council and the resolution that was passed, um, we talked about it from a proof of concept and then we talked about moving forward to an RFP and that's the piece and now we're going to let the RFP and wait for that money to come back. But the funding that we talked about at council for the fire communications project was to come from the modernization funding that we received from the province, the $725,000. Until we get the RFP results back, we can't know for sure exactly what the bottom line is for us. And I think our consultants tried to be extremely conservative in, in what they, um, as far as our expectations are, because he was coming in at 850. Um, but there's the belief is that we're gonna do better than that when all is said and done. So we're voting on this amendment then? That's the one we're voting on first? So just for clarity, is this amendment's on the floor right now, but I want to get clarity is, is this meaning the, the fund to the efficiency fund be taken completely out of this? But is that, is that the intention of this motion? I, I just want to get clarity on that. No, the intent of the motion was to, re it's in the budget now as an outline item. Uh, I hear it's being funded, if you will, from that reserve, but it's still taxpayers' money uh, that's being allocated in one way or the other. So my motion is to remove it from the budget. It could be funded from uh, member municipalities who wish to contribute for that on whatever allocation of the cost they choose to do so, but it should be removed from the budget as a core service of the county so that ex that estimate number is 850 is that what we have in there what is that estimate we should have a, it should be at least we know what that is so we, everybody knows what they're uh, voting on the, sorry 
Let Kevin speak to Kevin? May I, may I suggest these changes be pulled apart and voted on separately so that I think it's too confusing when you, you're putting them all together. And my, that's just a suggestion. So um, you wanted to start first with the asset management one and the 1.7 and that, and I, I can tell you what would that, that would mean now I can, if you wish, but. Procedurally, we have an amendment on the floor. The amendment has been moved and second to the original motion. So right now that holds ab abeyance the original motion and this is a is a another point that's being discussed on the on the budget or on the uh, original motion so i think procedurally this one stands because then we, we debate whether this stays or this doesn't stay and that's what we sort of need that number and if it if it carries or it doesn't carry then it's gone Let me speak to one more thing. okay so madam ceo so kevin if you would confirm please that the fifty thousand dollars is the only part of the fire project that's specific, the only expenditure that's in this budget right now. Just for clarity then, if you do go for the RFP and it comes back at that, it's not linked to that efficiency fund in the sense of that 850, how, like, like right now it's the $50,000 line, but it's not tied to the big 800 or whatever that was going to be for the 380 mics and all that kind of stuff. Council would still have the discretion at the time that we brought back the award report. Normally when we bring back an award report, we also speak to the source of the funds. Right. So we originally had discussed the modernization money as the source of the funds and set that aside. We have not, our, have not earmarked the modernization funds for another purpose. Should council decide that they want to do something else with the modernization funds or want to do um, fund this particular initiative, the radio communications initiative, from another source, they still have that discretion. Okay. So, so just for clear, all the lower tier municipalities that are sort of have been part of this conversation, there needs to be a conversation before we go out for an RFP just to make sure then they, to who's funding it because if, if the county decides they're not funding it from the efficiency fund or somewhere else, then there has to be a funding somewhere else before you really go out for an RFP because I think if you go down that road and then you don't grant the RFP because nobody's deciding where that funding's, you can't really do that, can you? I don't know. Which is why we've been working on this for over a year. Right. Um, to try and, with the chiefs, with the CAOs, with, the, uh, with as a group, we brought back two reports to this council um, we've retained um, one of the most knowledgeable consultants on, on the file to be able to help us determine what the system requirements are. Um, and so if the decision today is to set that work aside, then certainly that's what we could and should do because it would not make sense to go for an RFP that you had no intention of awarding. Exactly. Does ever, questions, uh, Councillor Woodbury. Does ever, you understand the motion that's on the floor? Okay, Councillor Woodbury. Okay, uh, just clarify a couple of things. One is this council isn't, and our budget is not about just mandated core uh, activities. There's other things that we do, whether it's transportation, whether it's with paramedicine and, and expanding the things. This council is not stuck to those core things. This is a decision we made to go down this road a year ago um, this has to do with public safety because it ties in the fire services, emergency services in the county. I think this is a, precisely the type of thing we should be funding, and especially at a $50,000 price tag, to coordinate things and to make things work, work better uh, for a major emergency response. To me, all we need is one major emergency that calls out our emergency management team and this is more than paid for itself with one incident. So I, I am in support of this and uh, would be very disappointed if a year into this, we changed direction without some other input other than what we've had. Okay, thank you, Councillor.
Thanks, Warden, and uh, I agree with uh, Councillor Woodbury. I'm not sure why we're really having this discussion today because we had all the chiefs here, you know, a year ago, and they provided us with, you know, very good information as to why we uh, should be supporting this as a county, and we as a county council decided to support it, sent the staff to, uh, to do the work, and here we are at the last minute, you know, with a motion to withdraw that. So it just seems wrong to me. Any other points, com questions? Councillor Potter and then Councillor O'Leary. Okay, once again, uh, I think our issue is that we're, we're wandering into territory and our question is, does the county belong there? Um, what's next? Policing, you know, our, our, we're, we're, uh, we're going to be moving into, uh, into what, have been lower tier responsibilities. And when you give up responsibility, you also give up authority. And that is a big issue for us. We're not just talking about 50,000. 50,000 is just to do the study. Uh, we're going to be talking about a lot more money in the future. So I, I think we should, we should think about the road that we're about to go down uh, and whether we're giving up uh, local control of of uh, this particular uh, responsibility. Okay, thank you, Councillor Lurie. I just want to finish what I was going to say. I will not support that amendment, and uh, we're in this together. Uh, I don't like hearing the words the municipalities involved should be paying for that. I don't like that. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Councillor Robinson. Thank you, Mr. Warren. I, too, will not be supporting the uh, amendment to the main motion. Uh, this is a project that we are working on that uh, provides coordinated efforts for infrastructure that relates to emergency services, its towers, its equipment, and uh, so I will, be, I will not be supporting this motion. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions? If not, we're going to be voting on this amendment. Does everybody understand the, uh, the amendments on the floor? So just in a sense, if you vote yes, that's in favor of taking it out. If you vote no, that's in, that's not, that the, the motion will be lost then. Does everybody understand that? Am I got that correct? Yes. Okay. Okay, seeing no more discussion, all in favor of the amendment? Opposed? That motion is lost, okay. So going back then to the original motion, do we have that number? So everybody understands what that number, that 1.7% or that highlighted yellow is for the mover in the second or two. So you'd be changing the, the you'd be including in the transportation's capital another $400,540. So if you added that to the budget, then you're looking at a a budget increase of 1.93%. Thank you, Mr. Warden. I'm just a little confused. Uh, so we're back to the original uh, motion. Does the original motion deal with the two items that I see before us, meaning the asset man management as well as the student uh, intern? Yes. And if so, I want to suggest that we split them out because I might want to support one but not the other. Hex, that you make a motion to, to have them uh, split out? Okay, so moved by Councillor Hicks, Deputy Warden. Do I have a seconder to pull the two items? Councillor McKeveny. Okay. So that is going to happen. So then we're going to, I guess the procedure then, we'll vote on the two points. Is that a, procedurally? 
first we'll vote to split them? Yes, we've got to vote to split them first. Okay. So right now the motion on the floor is to separate them. Okay. Does everybody understand that? So any questions with regards to that motion? Seeing none. Okay. I'm going to call the vote. Those that are in favor of splitting the two items out. Opposed? That's carried. Okay. So one, one objection. So it was carried. So now uh, we'll have a vote. Right, so then, well, the um, change of asset management spending up to 1.7% uh, over 10 years versus the 1.1% 1. 1 over 15 years. Do I need a separate mover and a seconder for that then, Madam? Madam yes, that's okay. Okay, so I need a mover for that one. Councillor uh, Millen, do I have a seconder? Councillor Desai. So that's that first bullet. Questions on that first one for, for moving it from 1% to 1.7. Any questions on that? Seeing none, all in favor of that? Hang on, so I got one, two, three. Opposed? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yes. Motion is lost. So to move it to one to one point seven is lost. The second motion is to I, I need a sec, sorry. Sorry? Am I doing something wrong? No, no I'm just not keeping up. Okay, sorry. So while that's happening, now I need a motion for bullet two for the student. Would somebody like to move that? Councillor Hicks, Deputy Warden, and Councillor Desai. Um, could you guys clarify whether it's coming from Yes, that's right. Clarity. Okay, yes. And Clarity, uh, it was suggested from that one. So, so that's moved by Hicks, Councillor Desai. The clarity that came from uh, Kevin was it would come from a reserve, um, um, one-time reserve. Is that the intention of the mover and the seconder? Yeah. Deputy Count. So we should have that in the motion if that's okay, so that that's where it's coming from. So the 12.5 uh, be funded from the one-time reserve. Okay. So that's the motion that's on the floor. Discussion. Councillor Mellon. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Warden. So am I to understand that we just turned down the ability to raise more tax money that is needed for our transportation network, our asset management. Now we're being asked to vote to include more help to a department who says they don't need it. Have I got that straight? It makes no sense to me. I'm sorry. It, it, fine. Okay. To put words in Randy's mouth, I know Randy said that he, you heard his explanation of what he presented today. So that's how he's oh, presented. That's how I understand yeah. It. Okay. Right. Okay. Clear. Yeah. Or at least I'm clear. Okay. Does the mover and seconder wish to speak to this motion at all? <laughs> okay. Any other discussion? Sorry, Councillor Mackey. Well, typically, we were asked to support a, an additional position earlier, and the CAO gave us rationale as to why that position was required. I haven't heard any rationale as to why we need this student. Heard Randy talk about it was being incorporated into a full-time position, but I heard no rationale why I would spend more money for a student position. So I have a hard time supporting something I don't have rationale for. Fair enough, Councillor Mackey. Councillor Desai, do you wish to explain? Thank you, Mr. Warden. Um, earlier, when, when the, uh, the the dis, or the idea of uh, eliminating the student position was introduced, I did ask the question on whether it was a, a move that was coming out of austerity or if it was a move that was felt that the full-time position would uh, cover the uh, the increased hours hours on the full-time position would would absorb the workload. Um, we heard that there would still be uh, a significant overtime. It would be reduced, but there would still be uh, overtime on that. Uh, Work-life balance, while not as big an issue, would still be an issue. 
those are two reasons on that front as to why we, we, we should uh, be funding the student position. Another reason um, is, as we know from the province, the timelines and planning documents are getting a, a little um, uh, slimmer, uh, unlike my waist. Uh, <coughs> tough crowd, <laughs> tough crowd. Uh, uh, and and for <laughs> some, some self-deprecating humor. Uh, for, for, thank you. And further to that, I think it's um, another uh, I, another thing that was brought up was that this is, in fact, a very good experience for students and s some of them who are uh, a local Gray County uh, residents who um, who do get valuable experience. And I think twelve thousand to pay for uh, t to keep a young person within our community right now th that's that's not that much uh, money in, in that in that in the grand scheme of things, anyways. Um, so I, I hope that answers my colleague's question. So just in clarity, work-life balance, lower, more overtime time, and experience from somebody from Gray County. Okay, Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Uh, to the Director of Finance, I thought you made the comment that if the student was needed, if planning needed it, there was an avenue where they could go through the one-time funding to get it, to use it. And if that's the case, this shouldn't affect our budget at all at this time. I'm saying, I said that if council wanted to include this position back in, in into the budget, you could do that and fund it from the one-time funding reserve to see how Randy transitioned with the full-time position and with the special projects in the C, and he could review that in a year's time then if that student position was needed, go forward. It was what I was trying to interpret to that so that way you wouldn't be adding anything to the tax levy be just from reserve and we give it some time that that's, was just my suggestion okay is that that, that clarity you know yes. okay any other questions um, to the the motion that's at hand so this is clarity this is in the sense of will we uh, hire a student and it'll be funded out of the one time uh, one time fund one time fund reserve okay any other questions Seeing none, all in favor? Okay, hold on. One, two, three, four. Opposed? Oh boy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's lost. <laughs> Just got to make sure I count. <laughs> so that is lost. So now we're back to the original motion that is uh, on the floor. Uh, do we need new movers for that one? Because the original movers. So the original movers were there, but then there was a, a motion to pull them out. We voted on the two items. We've dealt with that. Procedurally, do we not still go back to the original movers? Councillor Desai. Oh, just, just. <laughs> I like doing that. We can't entertain that until we go back to the original motion. We've split it out. We've dealt with those two items. We're back to the original motion. For clarity, does the original mover and the second are back on those motions? So, Councillor Millen and Councillor Burley, are you still in, you're still in those original motions? I am. That, as it is right, as it is right here, the original what was being pre, uh, presented earlier on today. No. Okay, so we need. Okay, so I need a new mover and second. Councilor Burley, I need a seconder. So Councilor O'Leary, as, as, as the budget was presented. Right. right. Okay. The motion that's on the floor. Kevin. Just for clarity, Tar you, yeah, you're going to change that as presented and remove the rest. Okay. Right. Councilor Desai, do you have a, a question? <laughs> At the risk of becoming more unpopular, um, I would like to make an amendment, Mr. Warden, to make the 1% to the asset management an actual 1% that relates to 1% for this uh, fiscal year at $590,688. You're saying as you want to add clarity. Uh, no, that's the amendment because right now it's $572,200. And what's your number? You've been doing your math again. No, no, that's, that's from the presentation. 
Okay, so, you, okay, so, Kevin, you have a comment to that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's make sure we get that. So, before I can, before we even talk about it, is there a seconder for that? Oh, is there a seconder for that? <laughs> There is no seconder, Councilor Desai, so I can't entertain, I can't, er so it's back to the original again. So there's no seconder, so the motion doesn't live. So there's no motion. Okay, C Kevin. I, I just, <coughs> clarity to that motion too, so that the required, a total to be raised from tax sheets, taxation should be 59,809,900 dollars not just 741, that'd be quite a tax decrease this year. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there, I got to do it again. <laughs> I didn't have the microphone. All in favor? Opposed? That's carried. There we go. Thanks. Thanks there back there, Robert. Okay. Uh, I think that pretty, is there, uh, there is one item on here on the agenda. Any other business? Oh, so, sorry. Kevin, go ahead. I, I would just like to thank council for your indulgence today going over this, and I'd really like to thank all the finance staff and the directors for their input into this budget and help, so thank you. So I'm going to suggest, Kevin, that you can have the rest of the day off. <laughs> oh, hang on, hang on. No, the, the, the CEO is going to speak first. At our meeting next Thursday, um, we are having an update um, from staff here as well as from the health unit on the status of the pandemic planning and some of the best practices that we all need to be paying attention to right now. So can I ask that um, you're certainly, any of your key staff that are involved in that are more than welcome to come to the beginning of the meeting. It's the delegation part so they could get in and get out or at least to ask them if they want to watch it online. We're just trying to, this seems to be a really, a, it's a bit of a moving target here and we want to make sure that everybody has all the best information. Okay, thank you. 